blatantly went through a red light. Running lights, ignoring sirens. Oh my God. Have police seeing red. I want to talk to you about your disgraceful driving. A night out goes horribly wrong. Basically, he would have been crushed and possibly killed. And the danger isn't over yet. I'm not getting too close, so I don't like getting electrocuted. You've got a prank to go to. Road rage, I heard. And a minor fender bender heats up. You're just trying to make it harder. Not at all. I'm trying to make it easy. That's all right? I want, and he said 63, travelling in the right lane. Senior Constable Heather Allen has just spotted a driver in a bit of a rush through a 40k school zone in Knox. Want to pull over, or what do you want to do? No? 22 kilometres over the speed limit. This driver is a serious hazard to young pedestrians and seems oblivious to the patrol car behind. Pull over. Oh, now they're going to the right. Even with that blaring way. sirens, tooting horns and flashing lights, the driver shows no signs of stopping. Sound like a 500 metre intercept because this person has trouble knowing that I want to pull him over. Unbelievable. Stop! 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 And at long last, the driver pulls over. Do you not hear the sirens behind you? Did you not hear the siren behind you for the last 500? Put your handbrake on and stop the car as you're going to roll into my car. Just stop here. You don't have to park. Just stop. Senior Constable Andrew Jones and leading Senior Constable Peter Bast are en route to a serious collision on a nearby freeway. Just a job for a canvas pole and our pole's falling over on the freeway. They arrive to find emergency services in full attendance. The van's front has caved in and is severely damaged. What it appears is that the males are uh, driven down the median strip for a little bit of a distance and collided with a light pole, knocking the light pole down and uh, trapping himself by the leg into the cabin. While the driver is conscious, he could have severe internal injuries. The medics are eager to assess him, but there's a major problem. Just given that it could be live power, don't sort of actually touch the metal. We're like 45 minutes away from the um, power plant. Yeah. Uh, the main concern at the moment is that, given that it's a light pole, a bit of arcing and sparking underneath, it's at live power as well, so we've got to make sure the power company gets here to make it safe before anyone really touches anything. It could be anywhere up to 45 minutes or so. We sort of stress the urgency, given that the males trapped in the vehicle and we can't really do much for until the power's cut. With little anybody can do for the driver until the live wires are switched off, Andrew and Pete begin to piece together how this event has unfolded. Given this time of night, there's a couple of options that could have happened. Um, alcohol, speed, fatigue or uh, deliberate act. You've got a prank to go to. Road rage, I heard. Minor incidents sometimes escalate fast, and senior constables Ray Pentoni and Greg Loney are on their way to a ding that's heating up. Road rage, two vehicle code 12. I just says it was just not exchanging details. So, I don't know, we'll find out. We'll find out. They arrive to find a truck blocking one lane. This bike here is just fine. Won't hand over life. Rush hour traffic's building, and so are tempers. So you're in. The left or the right? In the right. Yep. He's come over the right hand lane. He, he's coming straight. I've come over and he's, he's clipped the back. I've asked him for his license number. He's pretty much said, I said, well, What do you mean? I said, They're nothing to you. I overtook you. I overtook the van. I indicated. I came in. And he's, and he's hit the truck. And saying that now he's trying to say that I hit him. So you're saying when he's swapped lanes, he's collided with you? The yeah, front yeah, end yeah. Of from the right hand lane to the left lane, he's hit me to make out as if I've hit him. The blame game's going nowhere. But this driver's determined to get police on his side. It's a bad news. Was there any damage? Not, not particularly. Well, there's no damage, there's no, you know, things can hit without, it's, as long as there's no damage, right? There's no damage there, but it's... Well, that's, well, let him worry about that, Let him worry about that, all right? Yeah. Getting intimidated by a truck. He's claiming completely around the other way. But he's being intimidated by you. Oh, 
Well, well, I don't know why you've even stopped, though. I can't understand why. I don't even know why. Yeah, but what for what for what reason? Because he's hit me, so I've jumped. Well, there's no evidence of that. Yeah, I know, but it, you don't realise that you actually pull over. Well, you pulled over. You've seen and that, so, and then and you, you should have moved. Yeah, I should have moved. He's the one that's called called us. Stating that he's being intimidated by you, why should we believe you? Just ask him for a license, don't we? So, you know, he doesn't have to part. give that to you, though. You've got to have. There's got to be a collision. There's got to be some damage or some injury, yeah. right? If there's none of that, there's no accident. So he's right within his right rights to say nothing, to tell you nothing. I mean, in fact, he's right. He no, really didn't have to neck. stop. Could have hurt my neck. Sorry, mate. I could have hurt my neck when he hit me that hard. He could have. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're not talking about could have. We're talking well, about what exactly. Maybe, we're talking I'll, about I'll facts. Go to doctors and find out. So you've got a sore neck now? Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's is it just hard. made up or is it just... He's hit me quite hard, so yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I can't see any damage. Yeah, oh, yeah. Will you no, show no. me? No, no. Will you show me? Show me! Senior Constable Andrew Jones and leading Senior Constable Peter Bast are attending a collision between a van and a light pole. The van's front has caved in, trapping the driver. Uh, the main concern at the moment is that, given that it's a light pole, a bit of arcing, sparking underneath, it's at live power as well, so we've got to make sure the power company gets here to make it safe before anyone really touches anything. While emergency services keep a watchful eye on the driver until the power company arrives, the officers begin determining what's happened. Black mask going off, leading towards where he's gone off the grass. I was just checking out his tyres to see if he's had a blowout or something like that, but I can't see anything like that at the moment. With a blowout looking unlikely, what could have caused the van to collide with the pole? It's a mystery. He's gone off the road at some distance. And he just kept driving down the grass, and you've got to start looking at things as to, did he know that he's actually gone off the road and just kept driving down the grass, or was he just that impaired that he didn't even know what he was doing? If it was a deliberate act, there's a couple of poles, so you've got to have a look and see whether he's actually tried to lighten one up and missed it and then got the next one. He sort of almost goes around this pole. Yeah, but you can see the, the tyre track there, yeah. and there's another one over here. He could have fallen asleep if he's um, been lucky enough to keep it going and dodge the first pole. Yeah. Have you, you haven't had a chat with him yet? No, well, I'm not getting too close. I don't like getting electrocuted, so... The driver has been trapped for over an hour, and the arrival of the power company is a welcome sight. All attention is turned to getting the driver out of the crushed van. Power company's arrived. They've turned the power off to the power pole. Um, it's allowed the rescue crews to get in there and to start uh, cutting him from the vehicle. We have other fireys on standby here with hoses in case uh, there is sparks or any other fuels or that uh, do go up normal proportions for when we get attend an accident scene. I can't see you down. Yeah, oh, Will you show me? No, no. Will you show me? Show me! Senior constables Ray Pentoni and Greg Loney are attempting to get to the bottom of a minor collision that's turned into a major argument. I asked him nicely if I could move my truck off the road so I don't um, you know, cause a traffic jam and uh, he wouldn't move his ute so I could move my truck forward. He just said it could just stay like that. I've asked him for his license number, he's pretty much a get. Nobody is injured. No damage has been done, but the ute driver isn't happy. Sorry? What, what's a different attitude? Like, oh, I asked you. Mate, asked we're you trying to you. settle this. Are you yeah. just trying to throw spanners no, in? That's all I wanted. All we're that's trying to do I is wanted. settle it, mate. Yeah. And you're just trying to make it harder. Oh, not at all. I'm trying to make it easier. That's all right? I want, and he said, no, no, no. I want to get you to do that. If you feel that strongly about it, you'll really, if you want to cause the accident, you failed to give way. Is that the law or not? It's only what you say oh. and it's only what he says. Don't ask me. I didn't see it. Yeah, if you've got a witness, go for your life. Where, where right? was I supposed to give way? Oh, no, Failing to give way where? Right. See what I mean? Yeah. Where? Right yeah. on this lane. Yeah. See what I mean? Where's the give way sign? What I suggest you do is you... Someone's got their indicator on. You don't speed up. Mate, you go and tell it to a magistrate. Yeah. Don't tell it to me. Anyway, you go and I'll see go, a, go you go and see a lawyer and you go and see a magistrate if you wanted that. I'm glad, mate, because I didn't cause no problem whatsoever. There's evidence there was a collision. All right, exchange names and addresses then. Do you mind just, I don't think you two are getting on that well. Do you mind if I just give him your name and address on yes. your behalf? Yes. Yeah. How much details do you want? Name, name address, and address and registration number. So I give that to you? Yes. Yeah. What, what would you give someone your address? Because it's a law. 
Mm -hmm. what, what would you give someone, say if you had a big accident and all that sort of thing, this bloke had a bit of road rage and all that sort of thing, you give him the licence, because it comes over to your joint and knock you out. Well, I'm giving that sort of information out. Well, you're, you're required to. Am I? <laughs> well, I've told this yeah. three times now. Yeah, no, fair enough. All right, and I don't know how many bingles I've been to over the years. Yeah. I've never heard of that happening. Yeah. All right, so I think the two of you are just getting a little bit hot-headed. Yeah. You know, take a few breaths. Yeah. Just get along a little bit. Oh, right, right. The bloke in the front was pretty unreasonable. He wanted licence numbers and that, and you don't have to give licence numbers. All you have to do is give your name and your address and your registration number, OK, and then move on. And if you want to, volunteer, phone numbers insurance companies, you're quite willing to do that. But otherwise, the whole idea there is just try and get that, so we get, get traffic moving and get these two people away from each other. Senior Constable Heather Allen has intercepted a driver going too fast through a school zone. Did you not hear the sirens? And now she wants to know why it's taken her so long to pull over. Did you not see me behind you with the siren on and the lights flashing? I not. No? Are you serious? I just look at you away from me. Yeah. What, is, what does it normally mean if a police car's behind you with the lights and siren going? What does that mean to you? Yeah, not good driving. Don't be upset about it, I'm just trying to explain it to you for next time. If you hear or see a police car, you pull over to the left in Australia as soon as you can. Don't stop where you are, don't keep going, pull over to the left. On left. left. Do you understand? Okay. Yep, yeah, this is not a With America. the lesson in flashing lights over, Australia. Heather moves on to the road rule that was All broken. Right. Now, I was trying to pull you over because you were driving too fast. Too fast. Mm. Way back there on Baronia Road. 62 in the 40 zone. 62. I'm sorry. So you're 22 kilometres over. So next time I, I will... Next time you'll pay more attention? Yeah. We hope so. Next time you'll pull over to the left when you see a police car, yeah? A quick check with Vic Rhodes, and it's just one ticket for this okay, driver this today. Back. So this is the fine. So it's $244 and three demerit points. All right. Yeah. All good? All right, take it easy. This is my first time. First uh, time, hopefully the last time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the last time. Good. All right, have a good day. Thank you. See ya. But it's not the last time Heather will experience this type of behaviour today. This driver's just blatantly crashed the lights. Here we go, another one. And if he was oblivious to the red, he's also oblivious to Heather's police car behind him. Senior Constable Andrew Jones and leading Senior Constable Peter Bast are at a crash where the driver is trapped. Our primary job is to determine how his arm managed to end up hitting the pole. With the power switched off, emergency services are finally able to free the sole occupant. At this stage uh, from the ambos, the injuries are to his lower leg. Uh, they're non-life-threatening injuries. As the medics work on the driver, Andrew checks over the van for more clues as to what could have happened. It's pretty miraculous, actually, because he's lined it up where he's, he's hit it, so it's the centre of the vehicle, whereas if it was a little bit further across where the driver's seat was, um, he would have been crushed and, and possibly killed as a result of that. The driver has been extremely lucky, but Andrew is keen to hear his version of events. Right, the police are going to have a chat. Do you know what happened today? How you ran off the road? I do know. Yeah? Yeah. I was very tired. Yeah? Misjudgment. You had a bit to drink tonight? Well, it was a, a, a function, yes. How much did you have to drink? Um, probably uh, four pots of beer. Yeah? Anything else besides that? And I, I threw uh, one, one whiskey before I just left, before I just then. You should do a big long blow into the yeah. straw, so blow, 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 and stop. There you go, you're all right. Ow. The big question of why the van has collided with the pole may well have been answered as the investigation takes an all too common turn. Positive PVT. Yeah, might explain it. Yeah, we just Clean fatigue, you said. He's basically working seven days a week, long hours. So. 
long-term fatigue and alcohol. Uh, it's not a very good combination, especially when it's around about two o'clock at night, night on a Saturday night. It's been a busy day chasing offenders in a bit of a rush around the streets of Knox for Senior Constable Heather Allen. Just going to pull over this car in front of us. Blatantly went through a red light when everyone else had stopped, so we'll see what he has to say. Now she's hot on the heels of a driver who is in no hurry to pull over. Here we go, another one. There's another one I'm going to have to tell off. Disgraceful driving, red light. It's one of those days. The one kilometre intercept has left Heather frustrated and wanting answers. Hello. Did you not hear my lights and siren going? I, 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 don't, I don't know. You are old. You are old. Chasing me or something like that. You're I'll give you the hot tip, all right? If I've got my lights and sirens on, you move over to the left no matter what. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. All right, I want to talk to you about your disgraceful driving, going through that red light at East Link. You went through a red light. Didn't you see it? No. No? I travel very low more speed. Yeah, I'm not, speed I'm not talking to you about your speed. Yeah. I'm talking to you about going through a red light when the car beside you was stopped. Have you got your licence there? Yeah. Can you produce it, please? Yeah, but what's wrong? You, you asked me for the use. You, you went you through a red light. Reason. OK, yes, but by what reason? You went through a red light. That's what don't you understand? You can, you can order me like this. I can. You give me your licence now. You must produce your licence when I ask for it. Yeah, OK. I can, I can give you a pause, but you can't say I, I'm doing something wrong. I can give you, yeah? For the 20th time, you've done something wrong by going through a red light. 20? What mean 20? 20 times? Oh, my God. It's a day of cars failing to pull over for flashing lights, as Senior Constable Heather Allen deals with a driver wanted for running a red light. You will be getting a red light infringement notice. I'll come and speak to you in a moment. But the driver is refusing to admit he's committed any offence. A typical example of another person who can't pull over to the left when police have got lights and sirens on. They always like that. Yeah, they just they just cheat. They have the absolute authority to do anything. They don't sometimes they don't respect the the citizen. Not only the driver. They only see, yeah. They abuse the power always. Yeah. Well, he's he's gone through a red light right in front of us when all other traffic has been stopped, and for some reason he can't understand that. He he didn't even know he's gone through a red light. Well, I didn't. Know. Uh, over speed, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't know, maybe they just, I don't know. I, anyway, I, I, at that time, I didn't, I didn't think of anything. Secondly, I had the same drama where he couldn't pull over, even though I've got my lights and sirens activated. For some reason, people don't understand they need to pull over to the left. I changed the lane already. I just let, her pa let them pass. But, they said, but she said I, I didn't. And if I pass, then yes, I pass. I need to get past. But otherwise, if I'm following them, they need to pull over and stop. I, I, I changed the lane already. I didn't... They are, they are chasing me. I think they are doing something, uh, maybe something. I don't know. I'm just going to go and give him his ticket and see how we go. Yeah, you finish your job? No, move over there, please. Um, the driver <laughs> seems to be in a bit of a rush and has come to give Heather a hurry-up. Get off the road. I have the right to go back to my work. Yeah, you I'm do. I'm already. Yep. Is that why you went through the red light? There you go, there's your licence, there's your ticket. Thank you. I think it's not fair because only, only her saying, she never, you, she never let uh, me to defence. It's just only one, one, one side saying. Yeah. I don't know what it is about today, but today in particular I've had trouble with people who don't understand that when lights and sirens are on a police vehicle, that you must move over to the left. Very, very frustrating. Just as well, then, that Heather hasn't seen what this driver is doing with her ticket. 